Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So in today's video, I've got 19 tips and tricks for the DJI Osmo Action 4. If you're brand new to the Osmo Action 4, this is the first time you're gonna be using one. These tips will help you get up and running and familiarize with some common settings and actions that you will need to perform on a regular basis. It'll also be handy for those coming over from a GoPro. It will help make you familiar with some of the settings and locations of these settings on the Action 4. Now I'm filming outdoors and the waves are crashing right below me. So there could be a lot of background noise. I do apologize for that. But with all that said, let's just jump right in. So the first tip is while you're recording, you can actually still adjust when the screen turns off. All you have to do is swipe down from the top while you're recording. You can see we get this bar here and we can set it all the way down to three seconds or all the way up to never. Now tip number two, just like a GoPro, we can replace this lens cover if it happens to get damaged. You'll notice I already got a few nicks in mine, but the glass is okay still. But if you damage it, these can be ordered fairly inexpensively from the DJI website. You just have to unscrew it and then you can put the new one on. It's very important to note, however, once it's off, it is no longer waterproof. So make sure before you go in the water that you have your lens protector on. It can be really tight the first time you go to take it off, but a little bit of elbow grease and you should be able to remove it. Now, tip number three, if you're coming from something like the DJI Action 2, the older magnetic mounts, the ones that are metal, are still compatible with the Action 4. As you can see, they clip onto the bottom and they're still nice and secure. They don't have some of the advantages of the newer redesigned ones, but you can still use them. So if you've invested in some extra magnetic mounts or you have accessories that have the old style magnetic mount, it is fully compatible. Now tip number four is you can connect a USB microphone directly to the Osmo Action 4 without the need of any adapters. You can connect a USB-C lavalier, a USB-C shotgun microphone, or better yet, something like the DJI wireless microphone. It just plugs in and it works. So really nice feature. It's great for quick run and gun filming. Now tip number five is you can easily create custom profiles just with a simple click of a button. For example, right now you can see we're in 4K30 with Rocksteady enabled. We have a wide field of view. All we have to do is swipe down from the top, go to the profiles, and all we have to do now is hit that plus button, and it's going to be saved as our C2. You can hit confirm. Now when we go to switch modes, you can see we have that new C2 button. So you can add up to five custom profiles, allowing you to switch back and forth between custom modes very easily. Now tip number six is we have a quick switch button on the side there. And that allows you to quickly switch between the different modes. C1, C2, photo, video, C1. Not only can you cycle through the preset modes that come standard, but you can also cycle through your new custom modes. But the best part is you can actually fully customize that button. As you can see here, we can turn off the voice prompt if you find that annoying. You can add switching to the front and back screen to it but we can add whatever modes we want in there. All we have to do is add or take out a check mark, and that way we can customize that button to display only what we want to display. Now, just like a GoPro, the front screen by default is zoomed in. It's kind of a cropped image, but if you want to readjust the aspect of that to have it a traditional 16 by nine, we can do so very easily by going to our settings, swiping down. We're gonna use this button here at the bottom right-hand side. Now when we flip it back over, as you can see, we now have a 16 by 9 preview on the front. So that's just personal preference, whatever you find best. Now tip number 8 is you can actually embed time code into your video. And that's very beneficial if you're going to be filming with multiple cameras that support time code. It makes syncing and using multicam features a lot easier. And to get to those settings, all we do is swipe down. We'll go to our main settings. We'll scroll down. We have the option there for time code. And you can see we have some options there. So definitely a handy feature if you're going to be filming multiple angles with multiple cameras that support time code. Now just like a GoPro, the Osmo Action 4 supports voice commands. You can see that we have it enabled because we have that little kind of face talking up there at the top. And to enable and disable that, we just swipe down and we can turn it on and off. We can also go into the settings. And we also have more control there. We can change our language. We can again turn it on and off. But we can also get all the voice prompts. You can see there it lists everything we can say to the camera. Now for tip number 10, it's to do with Pro Mode. On GoPro, there's something called Pro Tune to get into more advanced settings. With the Action 4, they call it Pro Mode. 
And to do that, we're just going to click that button there on the side. And then we're just going to enable Pro Mode. Once we're in there, we can adjust our exposure, our ISO. We can adjust our white balance and a few other settings. Now tip number 11 is how to enable only one screen on at a time. By default, both screens are active when you turn the camera on and that can use up more power. So what we can do is go into our main settings here. Then we just turn on single screen preview. Now if you notice, if we go over to the front, the front screen's turned off. If we tap it to turn it on, the back screen will be disabled. So it's a good way to save some power if you're not making use of both screens. Now tip number 12 is just a compatibility issue. This is the remote handle for the Action 2. It's an extension pole. Of course, I have got a magnetic mount on it, and it's also a tripod. But this remote, although designed for the Action 2, is fully compatible with the Action 3. It is a tiny little remote. It's rechargeable by USB-C. You just have to be careful not to lose it because it is so small. But as you can see here, when I power it on, we get an option on the back to request verification. That's just going to sync it up for the first time. We'll hit accept. And now, you can see we can start recording and stop recording. It's a little tiny screen on it. It's flickering right now because of the refresh rate of the phone but we can change some basic settings. So although designed for the Action 2, it is a great accessory for the Action 4. Now for tip number 13, just like a GoPro, we can enable grids on the back of the screen. Enabling grids allows you to frame a shot to make sure that the horizon is level, or if you're trying to follow the rule of thirds. To do so, again, we're gonna to go to our settings and we'll scroll down until we come to grid. We can have just a standard grid, as you can see there, maybe you can see that or we can enable a diagonal grid. And that way, if you wanna find your center point, you can do so easily. Now, tip number 14 is to do with switching filming modes. There's three ways to switch filming modes. The first is what we've already talked about earlier on, using the quick switch button. C1, C2, photo, video. But we can also swipe from the center of the screen. And you can see we can go back and forth between all the different filming modes. And the last way is just to click on the bottom left hand icon there. That'll bring up the modes as well. Now tip number 15 is to enable or disable low light mode. One of the features of the Action 4 is it will automatically enhance low light if it detects the ambient light is too low. You can turn that off or disable it if need be. And to do so we're going to click the button on the right hand side there. And you can see down here at the bottom right hand side it says low light image enhancement. We can click on that and we can turn it off. So if you don't want that to pop on automatically, you can disable it. Now it is important to note that that is only available when filming in 4K 30. If we switch it up to 4K 60, we go back to that option, you can see it's just not available. Now for tip number 16, another nice feature of the Osmo Action 4 is that it gives us five levels of sharpening that we can choose from but it also gives us three levels of denoising. And to access that, again, we're gonna press the button on the side. We're gonna to go to image adjustment. By default, it's set to default, but we can go over to custom, and you can see now we can adjust our sharpness. We can go two above or two below. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have our noise reduction. We can go one above or one below. Now tip number 17 isn't a setting, it's just more some information if you're migrating over from the Action 3. With the Action 3 we had a mode called HDR mode that you could choose, but with the Action 4 you don't have to select HDR. All footage is going to be captured in high dynamic range. So in my opinion that's a really nice feature, you no longer have to choose. Now tip number 18 here is to do with files and naming. We can customize a little bit how the files are named and the folders. Again, we're going to go to our settings, we're going to scroll down, and then we're going to select naming management. We can go into each one and adjust it to our own needs. So that's definitely a nice feature, especially if you're going to be working with multiple files. And lastly, tip number 19 is to do with the waterproofing and making sure the camera is sealed. It's just a good thing to know when you see red, that means the camera is not sealed correctly and it's not waterproof. For example, you may have noticed when we took the lens cover off, we have that red ring that's signifying that the camera is not waterproof. But that's also on the doors. For example, if we open up the battery door, you can see right away we see red. So that shows us, especially if we don't have the door closed 100% properly, 
When you see red, that means it's not sealed correctly. And on the other side, the USB-C door, again, we have some red there, signifying that it is not waterproof. The only exception to that is obviously the shutter button at the top is red, that's okay. And the branding at the front, the number four is red, of course that's okay as well. And just as a little bonus tip here, maybe you're not aware, but if you look at the O there in action, that's a color temperature sensor. That's going to allow for accurate colors, help prevent flickering and color shifting, even when underwater. Definitely a nice feature of the Action 4. Well folks, hopefully you enjoyed this tips and tricks video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it had value, it's always greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.